Good morning, guys. Hey, it's me, Sean Astrom, and today I'm going to show you guys how we can create planetary atmosphere using Corona Render. Now, someone hit me up on the forums asking about how this could be done with the current build of Corona, and there are some ways, and I'm going to show you guys. Um, but I think what he was asking about <clears throat> was if you Google search um, Mars atmosphere, you can see here some of the imagery that comes up, and Mars does have an atmosphere, and it it uh, it it has this an effect effect that um, we can we can refer to here on Wikipedia called um, Rayleigh scattering. And if you guys want to learn about what this is, you can hop on here obviously and check it out. Um, this is a good example of of what we're looking to do, um, and and I'll show you guys exactly how we can do this in Corona. Um, and if we Google search um, Mars map, you can find all sorts of nice um, rectangular lat long maps that you can download. And I went ahead and downloaded this guy, and we're, this is what we're going to use. We're just going to try and create a quick Mars model. Um, so yeah, I'm hopping over to Cinema here, guys, and uh, bringing in a sphere. I'm going to add a bunch of segments. <clears throat> And let's put the radius to 200. And I'm going to bring in a corona light. We're going to call this the sun. And let's set it to area and circular. And one important setting is we want to set the directionality to a high value, something like 75 or even higher. We'll see how that looks. And then I'm going to just pull this guy out to the side here, maybe. Um, Let's go 2,000 centimeters. We're not obviously doing any of this at real scale. So, but if I go ahead and fire up the Corona interactive renderer, we can see what we're getting here. Um, my sun's a little bright, so let's just put the intensity down. And just for fun, let's tint it a little bit. And let's also crank up the directionality to like 85 and you can see what's happening there um, if we crank up the the radius as well to like 200 um, and then let's put the intensity to like four maybe even one okay now we're kind of getting what I'm going for um, so you can see that we're getting these this this harsh light um, that appears to be off in the distance and that's kind of what we're going for. Um, so I'm going to stop the interactive renderer. And let's create a new quick Corona material. Under the Diffuse channel, I'm going to bring in um, this texture here, this Mars map. Um, and you can see here that that is automatically mapped. Well, <clears throat> technically, I actually don't think with these material previews that it's mapped correctly, but you can kind of see what's going on there um, and if we just you know what let's get all technical here and let's call this Mars throw this onto our Mars sphere and just like that ladies and gentlemen we have a planet okay so and uh, something to point out this this Mars map is not actually 96k it's like 2k I'm actually not even, I think it's like 1K. You can find really high resolution um, maps out there for, for planets and stuff because um, that stuff is freely available to the public. If, if you guys didn't know that, I, and I know NASA and other space agencies post a lot of that stuff. So, okay, here we have our planet. Now, how do we create a, an atmosphere? Now, Corona has a wonderful feature, and that is um, ray traced volumetrics. And it, it does this in one of the best ways I've seen uh, any engine. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to show you guys how this works here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to call this atmosphere, and we're going to throw on our volume, and then we're going to scale up this guy by about, I don't know, 5 centimeters. So it's a little larger, obviously, than the planet. Now, unfortunately, as of right now, um, Cinema 4D's version of Corona or Corona's Cinema 4D version does not currently support 
uh, 3D density. Um, so in other words, under the um, distance, or you could say the density of a volume, you can't pipe in any 3D volumetric shaders um, like you can with Arnold and a couple other engines currently. Um, I know that Corona's technology, um, their, their engine does support that right now, but only in the 3DS Max version. I'm really hoping that soon we will see that feature inside of the Cinema 4D version. Um, so, but let me go ahead and hop in here and color this volume shader. So I'm gonna crank up the distance to 48 or something, I don't know, we'll go 100, actually lower. Let's go like 25 and then um, I'm going to, <clears throat> excuse me guys, I gotta clear my throat, sorry, hold on. <coughs> Man, okay. So we've got a couple colors going on here. Now the saturation of these colors is very important and also see we're kind of starting to get that effect here. So under the absorption we have that kind of orangey tone and under the scattering we're going to we're going to have kind of the atmospheric color and and for Mars I think that is somewhere around here sure. Um and another important thing is the directionality. If we were actually going to be like creating clouds or something you'd want this value set a little higher um, and this is how you can control like the silver lining effect that you see in clouds and whatnot but for the time being let's leave it at zero see what we get here and I'm gonna throw this onto my atmosphere which it already is and I'm gonna save here and let's fire up the interactive render and whoa look at that ladies and gentlemen we already have a really awesome looking atmosphere. And you can kind of see the scattering effect that we're getting there. And this is awesome. This is pretty much exactly what we want. I'm going to uh, crank this over to blue a little bit more as opposed to green. And I think that's looking really nice. Now, currently, um, to control the density of this, um, we have this distance parameter. So if I, if I crank this up really high, you see that the atmosphere becomes less dense. And if I lower it, then it becomes very dense. So like, you know, obviously at a value of one, it's, you know, barely see-through. So I think something around in this particular case with the scale of this planet, something around 50 centimeters looks pretty good. Now, the big question you guys are probably wondering is, well, that's that's neat and all, but an atmosphere technically fades out um, or has sort of a, it sort of dissipates um, as it kind of gets away from the planet. Um, and right now we have this very hard edge. Now, again, currently with, with Cinema 40's version of Corona, there is no way to properly do this using um, a, a density map. Um, in other engines, let me just show you here real quick, we could actually, um, well, I'm just going to do this real quick with a Cinema 4D material. In, inside of here, we could actually use Cinema 4D's gradient, and we could set it to um, spherical 3D. Now, even though this is a 2D preview, um, this would allow us to actually fade out um, in a three-dimensional way. Um, I can show you guys maybe at a later date and time. If you guys request, I, I know how to do all this in Arnold as well. Um, and, and maybe I could put together an Arnold tutorial um, for how we can do that kind of thing. So anyway, currently with Corona, the best way to fake this effect is to actually, under our texture channel here, bring in a Fresnel. And I'm going to also in the scattering... Um, do the same thing. Now, since since Corona now has nodes, let's do this with the node editor real quick. So I'm going to pop my material over here, and I'm going to take this same Fresnel and plug it in to the scattering. Now, you will see that um, it's you know taking this color here and and mapping it to the atmosphere, which is not quite what we want. Um, and so for that, we can actually set this to multiply. And if I set this to multiply, now that seems to kind of be working. 
Um, let me actually try some of the other blending modes here. Add, add, and I think that might be what we're looking for, guys. So you can see here, if I lower the distance, let me um, put this in this window here. Um, if, if I lower the distance, you can kind of see what's going on. So you can see that Corona is actually supporting this correctly. You can see that we're getting this fade out um, at, at, at the glancing angle. And so with this, we can kind of fake the atmosphere fading out. And, and to do that, we just need to adjust the gradient value inside of the Fresnel shader here. So, and look at that beautiful rainbow effect we're getting there. That is just awesome. Um, a lot of engines, guys, really struggle with, with these types of effects, and especially, um, not to mention, at, at these kinds of speeds. So, um, so I think I'm going to scale this back a little bit here. Um, now, if you guys want to get real precise with this, we can select this knot here, go over to um, position, and... Um, set it to, you know, like 0.25 or something here. Um, and then this guy we can move around to get into a nice position here. Um, I think that's looking pretty great. And now the only thing is we just need to crank up that distance again. Um, so now we're getting that awesome atmosphere effect. And if I just zoom in here, you can kind of see how that's fading out. Now this is totally kind of a fake um, because it's not actually controlling the density of the volume. Um, but like I said, hopefully that feature will be available soon. I'm just going to bring in a, another object here so we can see how this... Um, oh, I'm flipped around. Sorry. So we can see how this works. Um, man, what the heck is going on here? Um, I'm trying to get this in the background here. Wow. Hold on, guys, here. Sorry, this is ridiculous. Um, I'm working in the opposite direction than I normally do. And I just want to see how this works. So if we have an object behind here, you can see that it does work. We are getting a nice fade out here um, with the atmosphere. And that's, that's perfect. This is a, a beautiful way of doing this for the time being. Um, it totally works. Um, but eventually, it would be nice if we could control the actual density of the volume um, using a 3D shader. But yeah, guys, I hope that helps some of you out who have tried to do this effect. It's, um, like I said, other render engines, if they, if they don't, if, if volumetrics are not being ray traced, um, these effects can be challenging to pull off. Um, and as far as I know, um, Corona has some of the best volumetric rendering and speed that I've, that I've seen. Um, so if I go ahead and just do a final quality render, I mean, you know, this thing is going to be noise free here very quickly. And I don't have denoising or anything turned on. Um, but you can kind of see here, you know, we've, we've rendered for about, mm, let's get to 100 here and I'll stop it. Um, so 22 seconds and, um, pretty beautiful. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope this one, uh, helps any of you out that, uh, have tried to do this with Corona. Thanks again.